I was talking once to someone in New York. He said that he liked to listen to the, my Dharma talks because of the crickets in the background. So tonight we have coyotes. The canon tells of the time when the Buddha was wounded. Devadatta had hurled a big rock down a mountain, hoping to crush the Buddha. Well, the rock was split into many pieces. It ran into another rock, and one of the pieces, a stone sliver, got into the Buddha's foot, pierced the foot, and he was in a lot of pain. So the doctors treated him, and he was lying down, re recovering. Mara came to see him and said, What are you doing moping around here? Are you miserable? Are you depressed? The Buddha said, No. I'm lying down here with goodwill for all beings. This is a good practice for when, when we're sick, when we're wounded ourselves. In his case, of course, there was someone who specifically tried to wound him. In that case, it was especially important to have goodwill for all, and in particular the person who had wounded him. But even when there's no one else involved, it's good to have a sense of that larger perspective. May all beings be happy. As the phrase says, may they be free from animosity, free from trouble, free from oppression. And may they look after themselves with ease. This helps to wipe out a lot of the stories that you may build around your own pain. And put everything into perspective. We all have to deal with pain. We all have to deal with trouble, animosity, oppression. And there are times when we can't look after ourselves with ease. This is what's poignant about this reflection. We want all beings to be happy, but is it the case they're all going to be happy? Well, no. Because they're all owners of their actions. And people have all kinds of actions. This is true of you, this is true of everybody else. And you can't go around straightening out everybody else's actions. The best you can do is get them to act in skillful ways, if you can. But even then, there's still going to be suffering in the world. No matter where you go, there's going to be aging, illness, and death. There are some heavenly realms, apparently, where there's no aging or illness. There's just, I think it was just hunger and death are the only, only pains. But still, there's going to be pain wherever you go. This reflection should give rise to a sense of sangwega. The Buddha talks about that reflection we often do. I'm, I'm subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, separation. And I'm in the owner of my actions. That's the reflection we chant quite frequently, but it's only part of the sutta. That's the part that's supposed to develop a sense of heedfulness. The sutta then goes on to say, not only is this true for me, it's true for everybody. Everywhere in the universe, we're all subject to aging, illness, and death, separation. We're all the owners of our actions. And reflecting with that larger perspective, it's meant to give rise to a sense of some way that no matter where you go, you leave this lifetime, and you think, well, maybe the next time around will be better. But it may be better, but it's still subject to these things. And you keep trying to find better and better and better. But as long as there's birth, there's going to be aging, illness, and death. There's this kind of reflection that sent the young bodhisattva the Buddha to be off in search of what they call the noble search for something that didn't age, didn't grow ill, didn't die, which of course meant somebody who wasn't born. 
That search, he said, was the noble search. Everything else you might search for in life, he says, is an ignoble search. The good thing about the noble search is that it's open to all of us. It's not just for nobility in the conventional sense. We can all make ourselves noble. We've got the breath, we've got the mind. All the qualities that the Buddha said led to his own awakening. You can be resolution, ardency, heedfulness. These are qualities we have to some extent. And they're all open to us to be developed. It's like a vast continent where there's just lots and lots of land, enough land for everybody to develop what they want. And here's our chance. So when you're dealing with pain, try to be resolute. Don't let the pain get you down when you're dealing with tiredness. When you're dealing with just the general weakness that can come either from working too hard or just the fact that your body is beginning to, as someone said this morning, lose the wheels on the cart. This part doesn't work, that part doesn't work. Be resolute in the face of all of that. One of John Lee's Dharma talks to a woman who had long been a student of his. She was on her deathbed. And the talk was all about this. It's their strength of body and their strength of mind. And as we live our, <coughs> live our lives normally, each supports the others. But there comes, there comes a point when strength of body is going to fail. And that's when you need to have strength of mind that can depend on itself. So whatever way you can talk yourself into sticking with the practice and accelerating your efforts, even in the face of difficulties, just do that. Heedful the fact that even though this may not be the best situation, you've got aging, illness, death, weakness, whatever, there's always still the possibility to improve the mind. That reflection on heedfulness that I've got a breath, I've got this breath, I can do a lot with this breath. That should keep you on top of things. And of course, this goes together with ardency. The realization that if you don't develop skillful qualities now, you won't have them to fall back on when things get really difficult. If you do develop them, there's a lot to be gained. So these three qualities, being resolute, being ardent, being heedful. They support one another. And these are the qualities the Buddha said lead to awakening. He expressed it in slightly different terms another time. He said the two things that led to his awakening were one, the determination that he wasn't going to give in on his search, and then two, was being not content with skillful qualities. In his search, he, he framed his search in, the, in terms of in search of what was skillful. He knew that there was something that had to be done. There was a skill to master in order to find the deathless. The skill itself doesn't cause the deathless, but it enables you to get there. In the same way that knowing how to climb a mountain doesn't cause the mountain, but enables you to get to the top. But he said he did, he did not rest content with his level of skill. He gained strong states of concentration. He had all kinds of psychic knowledge, knowledge of his previous lives, knowledge of how beings are born in line with their karma. But he didn't stop there. He said there's got to be something more. There was still, as he said, an arrow in his heart. He wanted to pull that arrow out. And so as long as there was at least a little bit of anything, at least a little sliver in his heart, he was going to make sure that he was going to take it out. So again, these are qualities that we can all develop ourselves. 
to learn not to be dissuaded by weakness in the body or pain. The mind can have its own strength. It can be independent of the condition of the body. So try to develop that independent strength. Because it's something we're all going to need. We need it now, and we're going to need it even more as life progresses and the body regresses. Have that there as your refuge.